Okay, let's go ahead and build our first cluster node. I'm gonna go through this a little bit faster this time because we've already created the DC, so you kinda of know how to do this already. I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. I'm gonna say custom. Workstation 10, absolutely. I've got my installer disk. Where do I have it? Here under ISO, and then Windows Server 2012 R2. Next, don't need to worry about that. That's fine. Let's call this SQL node one, and let's put it in CVMs. We'll give it two processors with one core each. Let's go ahead and give it two gigs of RAM for now. That'll be fine. If we need more later, we'll bump it up. We want to use host only. Next. That's fine. That's fine. Create a new virtual disk. 60 gigs. Let's go 40 gigs. We're going to go kind of small on these guys because we're not going to house a lot on them. That's fine. Power on this virtual machine after creation. Absolutely. Click finish. And it's going to start up with the install. So there's nothing left for us to do really. So I'm just going to let it go through the install and I'll come back when I've got desktop. Okay, there we are. We have a full server installed. It took about maybe 10 minutes or so. That's really not too bad on a, on a laptop like this. I could go ahead and add this to the domain, but what I would rather do is add the other box first and then add them both to the domain at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's go back to home. Let's create a new virtual machine. Let's go through all the stuff we went through before. Did I get a chance to do the thing? Nope. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. And I'm going to call this one SQL node two. Oops. Need to pick the location better, don't I? I want to keep it with the other ones. So CVMs. Also, another advantage you get from putting it in a generic location like this, other than putting it in the default location, which is going to be in your My Documents folder, is if you have to move it to a new box, or if you want to run it under a different user account, you don't have to disassociate VMware from that, or you don't have to give somebody special permissions if you want them to run it. It's in this nice generic location, and you can always find it. So it's kind of, it just kind of makes it, um, you know, user profile agnostic sort of, sort of thing, right? It really doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. There we go. Let's give that one two also, right? We, we want them to match. Next, two gigs, sure. I'm going to say use host-only networking, even though we're probably not going to be happy with that. And I'll show you why later. We used 40 for the last one. Use 40 for this one. Okay, we're gonna let that install, and while that's installing, let's go ahead and take care of this other node. Let's see, I need to power this guy down, so I'm gonna go to VM, well, let's go to settings first, and let's see where we are for our networking. Come here to networking, it says host only, what I would really rather it be, so I'd really rather it be this VMnet one that we set up for the other one, and I need to make sure that we set that up as well. So now let's go ahead and reboot this box. So I'm going to say restart guest. Don't ask me. Let's see how this other install is doing. It's coming right along. So while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll be right back when all of these guys come back up. Okay, now we have SQL node two up and running. You can see here that we've got our nice generic name here, the same as we have on SQL node one. Now we're going to set up the networking and get them joined to the domain. First, I think what we should do though, is let's make sure that the domain on the DC is set up properly because I don't think we ever did that right. So we'll come here and go to network adapter. Yeah, see here I wanted to use host only, that VMnet one that we had up here. Let me bring that back up here. There we are, VMnet one where we got our IP range from. I wanna make sure that everybody's connected to that. So the DC is connected to that, right? Let's make sure one last time. Go to network adapter. There we go, VMnet one, perfect. 
And I think I have to bounce this before I can use it. So let's go ahead and do that while we're setting up the other ones. Restart guest. There we go. Now let's go make sure that SQL node one is on there. Settings. VMNet one, perfect. SQL node two. Network adapter, there we go. And VMNet one, perfect. Good. Let's go ahead and restart number two because I remember now that we restarted one already. So I'll restart this guest. The DC should be ready by now. It's coming up right now. Good. And once all this gets done, then we'll be able to rename our guests and then join them to the domain, which we can pretty much do at the same time. Okay, so this one is up. Let me let me check the DC again. Is it ready? Not quite. Okay, our domain controller is back online, and so are both of our other boxes. So let's go ahead and get this taken care of. Let me do that. I'm going to pin this because I'm going to be going back and forth between these two boxes. So let's start with networking again. I'm going to right click on there. I'll come to adapter settings, right click, go to properties. Double click on IP4. Let's give it a static IP. 192, 168, 195.2. Since the first one was one, let's just go in order. That's fine. Let's hit tab again. 192, 168, 195, 1 for our default gateway and for our DNS server, right? 192, 168, 195.1. Because we installed the DNS server on the Active Directory server on the domain controller, right? So that's what we want to be right there. Perfect. As long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and rename the server. I'll say local server here. Computer name. Change. I'll just call this SQL node 1. There we go. Now we can add it to the domain. ps.sql. Click OK. Administrator. Perfect. Now we're definitely going to have to reboot. Close. Yes, go ahead and restart now while I do SQL node 2. So the same thing, I'm going to right click. Network Sharing Center, Adapters, right click, go to Properties. Double click on IP4 and let's set this guy up now. 192, 168, 168, 195.3, shall we? And then 192, 195.1 for the default gateway. It's our DC again, right? 192, 168, 195.1 is our DNS. There we go, close out of all that. Let's go to local server, click on the computer name, click change. We'll call it SQL node two. Add it to the domain. That's SQL, not SQ colon. Next. This is your domain administrator account, right? Welcome to the domain. And let's restart that one. And node one is probably up by now, almost. So let's go back to node two. And these guys are gonna reboot and come back up. And as soon as they will, we'll be on the domain. And I'm gonna pause and I'll come right back. Okay, now we've got both our boxes on the domain. This is a really good time to take a snapshot of your entire environment. It's really good practice when you're working with VMs like this to pick certain spots that are really meaningful and take a snapshot. And I think having 
the domain built and having both boxes joined the domain, I think that's a really good spot to go ahead and take a snapshot. So in case something goes wrong, or in case we just want to practice something else, we don't also want to have to join them to the domain again, unless you just really like entering IP addresses. So let's go to the DC and we'll say take snapshot. We'll say uh, domain created, why not, right? There we go. Let's go to node one. Snapshot. And we'll say that this one is on the domain. And now let's go to SQL node two and do the same thing. I like to give them the exact same name so I know where they are on domain and take a snapshot. Perfect. Now let's go back to the DC and we'll look at a couple of these objects now that we're here. Let's go full screen so we don't have to do any scrolling. There we go. And I'll get rid of that guy right there. So we'll go to tools, AD users and computers. And now you can see that under the computers we have both of our nodes that we just created. Perfect. Now it's time to install cluster manager on both of these guys or failover clustering on both of these nodes and then install SQL. That's what we're going to do next. We're going to install failover clustering.